Joining us right now is Representative Mo Brooks from Alabama, a member of the Freedom Caucus. He thinks the GOP bill is in, quote, serious trouble. Congressman, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So the president has appealed directly to you to say, support this bill, please, or else you will lose, basically. Um, what's holding you back? Well, I, I didn't interpret the president's message to be that way. If we're going to get to the details, uh, you can have a major loss politically, sometimes from passing bad legislation, just as you can from failing to pass good legislation. In this instance, I believe that the legislation is bad in a number of different ways, primarily in that it creates a huge new welfare program uh, where taxpayer dollars are being used to subsidize insurance companies. And over the long haul, that's going to result in either higher premiums or higher taxes or greater deficit and higher debt that's going to burden our economy for years, maybe decades to come. So I'm looking at the big picture long term, and until we start getting away from this federal government supposed to solve all solutions, not taking into account the cost of it, because there's always a cost to giving away free things, uh, until that's addressed, it's very difficult to be for a bill that I know long term is going to do great damage to our country. Congressman, does it seem like the Freedom Caucus is coming to that conclusion? John Harwood reported last hour there might be a statement put out, for example, uh, of withholding support for this legislation. Well, as of this point in time, and things are fluid, but as of this point in time, uh, there are enough conservatives left in the House of Representatives to where this big government, big welfare program cannot pass. Bearing in mind uh, that it's very difficult for me as a conservative and as a Republican to wholeheartedly get behind a bill that is the largest Republican welfare proposal in the history of the Republican Party. And, and for someone to think that we should just lockstep jump behind that is quite puzzling to me. Well, Congressman, uh, understanding your stance on that, basically as a matter of principle, not wanting to get behind a move like that, you have others from the other kind of end of your party that have objections from an entirely different direction. So in other words, under what circumstances would you imagine that you'd actually have uh, enough votes to have some kind of a replacement for uh, the ACA that somehow does not also make allowances for the other side? I mean, is there any way to see clear to a point where you could find a bill that would suit what you think it should be? Well, unfortunately, you hit on a key point. And that key point is we have a lot of liberal, big government Republicans who masquerade as conservatives when they run for the United States Congress, particularly when they're in a primary. But you send them to Washington, D.C., they get in the House of Representatives, and all of a sudden it's very difficult to distinguish them from Democrats. That having been said, what I think we ought to do is we ought to repeal Obamacare. That's something we committed to doing. That's something that we had the votes to do in the House and the Senate just a couple of years ago. Then we can have a vigorous debate over what interjections of the federal government into uh, the nation's health care system uh, we should have. We certainly should interject competitive efforts so that insurance companies have to compete, so that uh, health care providers and insurance carriers are not exempt from our antitrust laws, do those kinds of things, and then as much as possible shift this health care issue to the 50 different states. For one fa uh, reason, if nothing else, the states are more solvent than the federal government is. As you well know, the federal government is headed towards an insolvency and bankruptcy because of this $20 trillion in debt that we've accumulated over the decades, coupled with the CBO projecting that within six years, we're going to hit trillion-dollar-a-year deficits, adding on to that $20 trillion of debt that we already have. Six years, 20, tr uh, excuse me, uh, trillion dollar year deficits until such time as in effect our economy collapses. We've got to stop that from happening okay. and that's what I'm trying to do by opposing this legislation. Yeah, we've been, you know, seeing that but also seeing incredibly low, you know, government borrowing rates and saying, okay, well, it's a pretty long leash that they've been given here. Let me well, just ask you this. Let, let, let me quickly. emphasize, no, let me I emphasize know, I know one where you're point. Coming from, Congressman. I understand, but let me just ask you this because it goes to what happened today on Wall Street. So the market is dropping because it's worried the health care bill isn't going to pass. Now, a lot of investors probably feel exactly the same way you do, but they're worried about, well, is the whole agenda stalled? If we don't do health care, we don't get tax, you know, we don't get any of the, the whole sort of platform that the president maybe came in on and that everybody was so excited about now, now feels like it has stalled entirely. Um, is, is that, what if that happens? I mean, is it, is it worth holding everything up uh, because well, of the objections you have to the bill? To me, the stall argument is a fiction. Uh, there is no substance behind it. We could be dealing with tax reform today if we wanted to. Uh, there's nothing that prohibits us from doing that. Further, if this largest welfare program in the history of the Republican Party were to fail on the House floor on Thursday, 
Well, hopefully, we will immediately go back to the bill that we already passed in the House and the Senate two years ago, and that's the repeal of Obamacare. So we can very quickly address these issues, provided we get enough people who can coalesce behind what is best for the American people. But I do want to emphasize that one point that was just made about uh, interest rates being low. That's a good thing, but the CBO is projecting that our interest rates on an annual basis are going to increase in cost by over $500 billion yeah. over the next decade. And I think you saw a little indicator of that a week or so ago when the Federal Reserve increased interest rates by a quarter of a point. Now, granted, that's not the same thing as what the federal government is having to pay to borrow money, but if that impacts our borrowing rate, that quarter of a point all sure. by itself costs us an additional $50 billion a year on a $20 trillion debt. That's how serious this situation is. Well, final question, and then it, we'll let you go. We appreciate your time, but uh, do you think that the AHCA then is effectively a dead bill as far as you're concerned? No, I don't, because the president and the House leadership are working very hard to twist some arms and try to uh, get people to change positions. As of right now, though, the conservatives that are left in the House of Representatives, we're fighting to try to make this thing financially responsible to not undermine the work ethic, to not increase taxes, to not increase premiums. And all of these things, these bad things are going to happen if this bill passes. It's just a matter of time before those bad things kick in and do the damage to, the, to our economy and our country that they're going to do. All right. Representative Mo Brooks joining us uh, this afternoon, representing Alabama. Thank you so much for sharing your thank time. Thank you.